Hello, this is the first of three short narrations having to do with fluctuations in our economy. And by fluctuations, we mean short-term changes in our economy. Uh, increases in spending due to income, changes in spending due to changes in government spending and investments and the like. We're going to have three different clips. The first one will build a framework for us to understand how to look at the economy and how to look at these changes and the principal forces that underlie them. The second clip will then uh, see how some other factors can affect uh, our equilibrium, our current position in our economy, things like changes in government spending and changes in investment. And then the third clip is going to look at the results we've seen so far and compare them to what we call potential GDP, which is sort of fully functioning, fully employed GDP. But let's first start with the, um, the underlying framework, the foundation for gross domestic product. You'll remember that there, are, in the spending definition of GDP, there are four major components that you see listed here. Consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. I won't go into any detail right now, except to emphasize that consumption, as you can see, is the 600-pound gorilla here. It's over 70% of GDP is driven by consumption. That's what individuals buy. So as I said, it is the 600-pound gorilla. It dominates GDP. And if we are going to uh, think about estimating consumption and what are the principal drivers of consumption, we'd have to say that, that income is the most important thing. And here, to be specific about it, income means personal disposable income, income that is available to us after we pay our taxes. As it turns out, if we look at a relationship between income and consumption over a long period of time, several decades, we see that there's a pretty straight relationship it forms a straight line on a graph. And here in this screen, you can see this equation, this red equation here, that describes that, um, uh, that line on the graph. C is consumption. And it's equal to some constant, which we'll show you in a second on the graph, plus personal income, disposable income, times this new factor that you see here called MPC. MPC, as we'll say, is, a, is the marginal propensity to consume. Kind of a mouthful, but what it really means is, is that if an extra dollar or an extra hundred dollars landed in your lap, what proportion of that are you likely to go out and spend, you know, to buy something with or to see a movie, uh, versus saving, which would mean paying off debt or putting the money in the bank for a rainy day. For us, the value of NPC we're going to use is 0.6, which means that um, on average, every new arriving dollar or chunk of money, about 6 tenths of it or 60% of it will be spent. Now let's look at it on a graph. Just orient ourselves to the graph, and we don't have real numbers here, of course, just enough to understand the relationship. On our horizontal axis, we have income. And ideally, this is, this is like the personal disposable income. But we'll just use income generally defined here on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, we have how much we spend, i.e. consumption. Or uh, you'll see in some textbooks and all, planned expenditures. We'll keep it simple right now to mean you know how much we spend. Now, the blue line is. Uh, what we call a consumption function. It's the line that describes how consumption varies with income. And this is the same formula we were looking at just a minute ago. Uh, when we said it a minute ago that there was a um, constant, that constant is shown here at 2. It's not a real number, just for illustration points. So even if income was 0, uh, we'd have uh, some amount of income equal to 2. And then the rest of the blue line is shown is how consumption or spending changes with income. And it has a slope of 0.6. For every one extra dollar in income, 6 tenths or 60 cents of that uh, will go to spending. So that's our basic line. 
All right, let's take a look at another graph, or the same one with an additional line. Now we have the same blue line as we had before, but we've added a red line, and this red line is sort of an identity. One of the things we learned early on with gross domestic product is that we can either define gross domestic product as how much we spend on things, or we can also uh, spend and thus produce, or we can also define gross domestic product as how much income we receive from doing all of that production. Now there's lots of things to control both uh, in terms of exports and imports and other things, but when it comes right down to it, gross domestic product can be defined in either way, either as a spending, i.e. an output sort of thing, or, or in terms of our income. It is an identity. Those have to equal each other. So this red line is just that. It, what it does is it shows income, also output, as on one graph and our expenditures on another. And the red line is exactly a 45 degree angle, one to one. Now, for our framework, what this means is that um, there's given this blue line, this consumption line that we have right now, it's just what we woke up with today that the one place that this blue line is going to intersect and meet this identity is right here where these two cross. We call this an equilibrium. And, uh, and another way to think about it is this is actually where we operate. So given this, uh, this relationship between consumption and income, the blue line, and then the red identity line where the two of them cross, is where we are, and that means a GDP of something or an output or an income, all of them are the same, of about five. This is, uh, this is in part what is called the Keynesian cross, as in John Maynard Keynes. Uh, there's a lot more to it and more in the textbook if you're interested, uh, but this is the beginning part of our framework of understanding how th things change in our economy. What we're gonna see in the next video clip is what happens if this blue line shifts up or shifts down. Uh, other things that might influence consumption and we're going to see how that affects out